If the qualifying times are anything to go by, it's going to be very, very close and it's going to be some serious draft trains. It is my apologies, my mic wasn't open for the first bit, but thank you for joining us. This has been an epic wait for this series and we are finally into it. We are Cut Price Racing, Mazda MX-5 Challenge. Big thank you to the guys at Cut Price Racing for their support uh, and continued support of us here at Vats Online. So a big thank you to those guys. Make sure you check them out over at cutpriceracing.com.au. But yeah, 16 laps ahead for these guys tonight. Draft trains will be massive. The hour of qualifying to actually see the guys get the grid was intense. There were three, four, five car draft trains, teams working together. And the field that we've got in this race is pretty much the who's who of Australian and New Zealand sim racing. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be a very, very competitive field tonight and throughout the series. I reckon with the number of very well-known names throughout the Aussie and Z iRacing community. So, yeah, it's going to be an awesome series and I'm really looking forward to it. About 30 seconds before we will run through the grid, but the series uh, will be 14 rounds over the next 15 weeks. Next week, we will not have a race in this series. We are broadcasting some dirt racing next week, which will be lots and lots of fun. But yeah, every week at around about this time, we will have coverage of this series. 
loosely following the official schedule as well. So that will help participation. But in two weeks' time, Summit Point, then Watkins Glen, Zolder, Phillip Island, Snedderton, Montreal, Road Atlanta, Alton Park, Oran Park, Laguna Seca, Silverstone, Sebring, and Brands Hatch for this awesome championship. Races will be around about 40 to 45 minutes every week. Fixed setup, and it is open to anyone. So if you are interested in having a crack and having a bit of a drive, you can jump in and join the show. We will run through the grid very quickly. Now, 40 cars on the grid. Josh Anderson, the quickest. Half a second from Ethan Gridgult. Then Hayden Dodman, Sonny Catchin. Our very, very good mate, Scott Fountain in fifth. Fonty right up the front. Then we've got Michael Hammond over the page. Corey Preston, Dylan Shepard, Ben Snell, Zach Best, Michael Cracknell, Ethan Warren, Denshin Delilah, Bo Albert, and Scott Lanark. Lanark running at the top 15. But it is, as we said, an all-star who's who of Oz NZ Sim. Uh, going to be a very, very fantastic race. I am looking forward. It's going to take about 40 minutes to get done. It will be action-packed from lap one through to lap 16. There will be draft trains the whole way down Conrod Strait, the whole way down Mountain Strait. I don't know who to pick to win. Anyone could win it. We are go. Yes, they are. And as we have 40 MX-5s file in to turn one, it's very busy throughout the field. Everybody's sorting themselves out. A couple of cars getting positions and also losing positions, but the draft train has officially started. Choo-choo all aboard. We are going up Mountain Straight. Josh Anderson leading the train, but behind him, got Ethan Grigg Gault and Hayden Dobman, Sonny Catchin and Scotty Fountain. And, oh, God. Catchin's in the grass, coming up Mountain Straight. Hayden Dobbins giving him a little bit of room. They're side by side, coming through turn two, but fairly clean the whole way through turns one and two. Yeah, it's looking like everybody's made it through the first few corners. So well, far, anyway. So side by side action between Sanjay Delilah and Bo Albert. Bo moves up to thirteenth position. got one car that's dropped from the train already, which is Kevin Anderson, who didn't elect to start on the pits, I believe. But Josh Anderson and Ethan Greg Gould have pulled a little bit of a gap, but that will close up as they come down Conrad Strait. Yeah, well, the draft being a massive part in this series with how equal these cars are, so it's going to be very much about how these guys use their racecraft rather than just having pure speed. These awesome MX-5s work their way down through the S's. A couple of cars just clipping the wall. But all in all, they've got down and in through Forest Elbow clean. Unbelievable. Yeah, it is actually. That's a lot of cars to have gone around the mountain and for them to have all come out the other side is very impressive. Have a look at the front. We said that the, the uh, gap that was there between... Greg Gould and Catchin would close and it's already dropped. And those front four have separated from the rest of the field. Scotty Fountain, he'll have to pull his finger out. But try and catch the back of Hayden Dobman. Side by side by side. Into the chase. That's uh, Larnak, a big moment. Two wheels in the grass. Riley Blythe having a look up the inside of Sanjay Delilah. He'll get the move done. Murray's corner as they start lap two. I think these two ERT drivers are going to do a bit of bump drafting here to try and get by. The Blythe is through and Ryan O'Sullivan gets through as well. Andrew Delilah's lost another spot and he's got pressure from Scott Larnack, another ERT car. Travis Schwecky in behind, but go to the front. Ethan Greg Gault is right there, potentially going to make a move around the outside, and Sonny catching up the inside, move done on Ethan Greg Gault, and he moves into second. Yeah, it's a very good move there, although Greg Gault's possibly going to look to make a move here at the cutting. Dodman's right there as well. Three car battle for the podium. Great battle. Oh, cars hitting the wall too, coming through. Up the mountain. 
tough enough to get these cars through, or any car through. Add in trying to make it 2 3 wide, which these guys will do later in this race. And while these guys are battling, Ethan Grigault and Aiden Dobman, Scotty Fountain's caught onto the back. Monty's going to get in amongst this battle. It's right behind him is Michael Hammond. Front seven, separated by about two seconds as it stands right now. Oh, it's Michael Fonty Hammond. Instant pull there. <laughs> Big hit on the wall from Fonty. He's got Michael Hammond going to hunt him down and, and take the spot. And Chip is right behind him as well, so it's a fall through. These guys will settle into a bit of a rhythm over the next couple of laps too. And then all of a sudden it'll just break out. Up the inside of Fonty goes Dylan Shepard. And Fonty off in the grass. And a couple of others in the grass as well. Oh yeah, back in the field. Ethan Warren. Warren. By the looks of it. Another car. Oh, Sandra Delilacs had an issue. A few cars that have been involved in an incident. Josh Anderson does the fastest lap of the race. We'll get a cut price racing replay. Pick up what's happened into the chase, but there's been a big moment between Sanjay and Delilah. Oh, it looks like our other good friend, Reese Gardner, has had a big moment coming up over the curb into the chase. And, uh, Reese will not be too happy with that. Yeah, I don't think he will. Uh, it was actually very lucky not to get cleaned out by Reese there, but unfortunately got caught up by Sanjin coming across the grass. So, yeah, he's probably going to be on the back foot here. Go back wide. The battle for the lead is on. A change of position for second and third with Ethan Grigor and Sonny Catchin. Change of position. And Michael Hammond's hit the wall. Oh, no. Another replay, but Hammond was up in the fifth. And they were starting to catch onto the back of Dobman. Up the inside went Dylan Shepard. There was a tiny little touch. It's just been enough for them to make real, real contact. Something's happened to Fonty too, because he's dropped back to 13th position. Yeah, he has. I think that damage might be affecting him from when he clipped the wall exiting Forest Elbow, possibly. Yeah, possibly. It actually looks like there's a little bit of damage on the other side of the car, but behind Michael Hammond, there's a real train form now. Hammond's dropped back to 8th. He's got Cracknell... Bo Albert and Ethan Warren all there to, to try and take advantage of that slower MX-5. Greg Galt's going to look to make a move at the chase here. Rick Galt's got stuck on the outside, but he's going to get it through. And Hayden Dobman's come through Dobman. as well. Tony Catchin's made it easy. And Zach Best, Corey Preston have come together in the chase. Oh, and that's big a moment. big moment. It's looking like Best tried to go up the inside and just got on the grass and lost it. Unfortunately, Corey being a bit of a bystander in that. He almost got it corrected and pulled up too, and Preston wouldn't have had a clue that he was there. Been contact, but we go back live. Michael Cracknell and Michael Hammond. Hammond's just had to let Cracknell through down the straight. And through comes Albert as well. Ethan Warren's dropped off from this little train. Bump drafting, you can hear the bump from the onboard shot talk about teamwork and that's one way to do it wonder if Ethan Warren or is 
I was about to say, I wonder if Ethan Warren will help push Michael Hammond. Cracknell crosses over. They're going to go too wide. Through the oh, cutting. Through the cutting. Yeah, this doesn't work. Back out a little bit. Oh, oh this. Oh, contact. Big crash. Big crash. Hammond's around. Get another look at that. There's still cars crashing in the background. Got Ash Lear involved. Car. Warren Pickering involved. Nick Best involved. That started as a chain reaction from Hammond and Albert. We get a replay. Albert still had a little bit of overlapped and Hammond sort of come across a little bit. And the incident between Lear and Best was just unfortunately Zach got slightly bit sideways out of the cutting and then unfortunately tried to catch it but it snapped back into oh snapped back on him unfortunately. Yep. But Nash nearly rolled it. They will get back out on track. They do have a quick repair and every championship point will count in this one. Go back to the front. Change for the lead. Ethan Grigold has got through side by side contact between Josh Anderson and Sonny oh, Catchin. Godman's going to come through. Grigold's off the track. These boys do realise that we've still got 12 laps of racing to go in this one. The Dodman up to second. Josh Anderson now back to third. Sonny Catchin, he was up there fighting for the lead. He's now back to fourth. Yeah, that's and that's all unfolded within the space of two or three corners. So, yeah, that just goes to show you how much a small change for position or a loss of momentum can cost you. The draft will play a big key. These guys at the front, I want to make sure that they all stay with within each other's draft. Almost contact between Anderson and Dodman. They just left each other enough room. They now work up the mountain once again. race is just starting to heat up now. Belly long championship this one. We've got 14 rounds over the next 15 weeks. The best 10 races from each driver will count towards the championship. So uh, a lot of chances to gain some good points. We'll make good results. Even more of a premium. Oh, yeah, big, definitely. big oh, moment for Grid Gold. He almost looped it coming down through the S's and into the Dipper. And you can see the advantage that Anderson's got out of that. Watch for Dobman to get the double draft down the straight. I think Grid Gold might have actually just tapped the wall down on the exit of the elbow as well. Side by side now, uh, Anderson and Grig Gault, which will help Dodman and catch and catch up because they won't be getting any draft while they're out there. And you can visibly see how quickly Dodman is catching, but Grig Gault's maintaining the lead. I don't know how. And he's going to hold it. Hold it. And here comes Dodman. And Dodman's going to come along as well. This is a great battle. Dodman's going to think about. I thought about chucking it up the inside, making a move into the final corner, but Dobman's a pretty smart racer. He, he knows the right time to make moves and the wrong time to make moves, and still a fair bit of time left in this race. Yeah, there is, so there's no need to be really putting on aggressive moves as we see him trying to find a way past Grigolt here, and Anderson's also trying to find a way past Dodman, so... It's going to be interesting getting into Griffin's Bend. Speaking from knowing how Hayden likes to drive, he would have, he'll be positioning himself now to try and work out where he wants to be coming up to the last lap. 
He'll be assessing all the different possibilities and all the different situations, where he wants to be at what point on the track. So, trying to work out whether he wants to be in second coming out of the chase or being in that position he was third coming into the chase and then getting into second on the exit and then possibly making a move at the final corner. But Josh Anderson, very, very accomplished driver, as is Ethan Grigg Gould and Sonny Catchin, one of the best MX5 drivers we have on iRacing. Yes, so the top four are definitely a bit of a stacked field, more or less. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens to come to the final lap. The best bit is the way that these guys will battle, they will still be going at it like this on the final lap. Sonny Catchin is dropping off a little bit. Oh, another big slide for Grig Gould. And another big moment through the dipper. Dodman just flips the wall. Coming out of the S's and into Forest Elbow. Field's a bit spread behind these four cars. Dylan Shepard in fifth, Michael Cracknell in sixth, Rhino Sullivan seventh. Cody Fountain in 8th, Travis Schwecki in ninth, and Tim Weston in 10th position has Cody Bird right on his tail. We're just seeing now another change for the lead at the front. Anderson's going to try the outside. Grid goal very, oh. very deep. Oh, oh, and a bit of a touch. And Dodman's going to Dodman. say thank you very much. He's going to take both and take the lead. This is Next a great also, battle. Yeah, Sonny Catchin's right back into this again now. He's just sitting back patiently and watching. He actually listened to the throttle control. He actually looks like he's out of the throttle a little bit at the moment. Yeah, so we're going to go three wide down the oh, front Oh, this is messy. Anderson retakes the race lead. Dodman he's and Grig go Galt. Oh! Almost, <laughs> almost wheel to wheel contact between Grig Galt and Dodman. Dodman now. Holds the position from Greg Gulton while these guys are fighting. Dylan Shepard is caught about one and a half seconds on that lap. This could yeah, be a five, six, actually. seven, eight car battle before we know it. Here comes Greg Gult. Gonna have to go around the outside. They're gonna make it three wide. Dodman has a try. Thinks better of it. Still a long way to go. Ten laps to go in this race. Yeah, we've definitely got a long way to go, but these guys are definitely still fighting like it's the last lap. Great to watch. We are in for one epic show here every Thursday night for the Cup Price Racing MX-5 Challenge. Get your breath while you can as they stay single file across the top because down the hill they will go three wide I'm very sure time Anderson leads coming down the hill we saw Greg Gould have big moments the last two laps last week when we had our test event yeah there was eight cars at least battling for the lead on every lap at Watkins Glen so a little bit of a smaller battle but even more intense than what we saw with 8, 9, 10 car battle last week. 3 and 4 car battle for the lead at the moment. And it has not stopped up and down the mountain. No, it has. And it's still very, very close. So I can't see it changing anytime soon. And it may very well possibly become a large battle as we see Greg Gold trying to go around the outside oh. of the chase. Greg Gold almost got squeezed onto the grass. He had to lift out of the throttle. A single file coming into the chase. Tony Catchin's dropping off these these guys rather quickly. He is actually. Comes Greg Gold. Sorry, Cam. No worries, but as I was just saying, maybe he's just struggling a little bit for pace at the moment. So hopefully he'll be wanting these guys in front of him to fight a little bit more just so he can catch up a little bit. Advantage that the guys battling in this pack right now have that they all have draft to work with. Opposed to Dylan Shepard behind, he has no one to work with. He's in a land of his own at the moment. 
Buzz behind, a little bit off the pace. Griggalt now looking at possibly going past Dodman again. Very, very interesting battle starting to unfold behind Bo Albert, who has got his car repaired back out there in 13th position. David Miller, Scott Larnack. They're very, very close. And then a little bit behind, you've got Shane Witt, Robert Northway, James McKee, and Gary Cousins all fighting for the same bit of real estate as well. There's some great battles the whole way through the field. Lodman's right on the tail of Anderson again. Oh, Griggalt just missed a gear. Almost hit the fence at the exit of the elbow yeah, and it's enabled. He was very, very close and it's enabled talking car of Hayden Dobman to pull away. I don't think we'll see any extravagant moves into the chase this time, but the draft closes up quite quickly. Qualifying when the guys were going out there by themselves, they were lucky to get to 207. They're about six or seven Ks quicker into the chase with this draft. And you can see now Dobman's close enough to possibly make a move as we reach the halfway point of this race, eight laps complete, eight to go. Interesting factor that I didn't think about. These guys are coming up to lap traffic. Yeah, they are actually. So this could very well possibly oh, this will get messy. cause some interesting, interesting scenario. Ethan Griggalt goes through on Dodman into turn one. Dodman didn't fight that at all. He knew that Griggalt had a run, possibly just taking it in turns. Uh, to, to save a little bit of energy, get their breath, not worry about a fight. They're just trying to work together at the moment to stay with Anderson, who was very, very quick in qualifying, had half a second on the entire field. But the draft has made a big difference in regards to qualifying in the race because Griggalt and Dodman and Catching can stay with him. Larnax ended up back in the pit, pit damage repaired. Heading back out once again. The battle down Mountain Straight. We've got Robert Northway in the number six Valvoline MX5 in the subway car driven by James McKee. They're battling very hard for 16th and 17th. Just behind is Gary Cousins in 18th position. Very good fight. Up the road, Cody Bird, Tim Weston going at it. They're battling for 10th position. Go back to the front. Watch these guys come back down the mountain because Riggle starting to catch up coming down the hill on Anderson and Dodman sticking with him. They could end up all together coming into the chase here. They very well could possibly. You are interested in racing in this series as well. It is open to anyone. There is a secondary race happening at the exact same time as well. The guys that didn't quite have the speed to make this race. Griggled up the inside. A contact between Dodman and Anderson. Anderson's pulled it up. They are side by side. And Dodman actually is redressing and letting Anderson back through. So now Griggled leads this time around seven to go. Oh, big us. moment. Lucky not to end up at the hall there. Get a cut price racing replay of that hit from Dodman here on the limiter. 
fifth gear coming down Conrod Strait. A little bit of a tap. Robin checks up. Let's Anderson back through. Good sporting gesture. Do you like a good old redress? What it's done, it's enabled Grid Gilt to pull a second. Saying that, that won't last long. Notice a change of position. Cody Bird has dropped back behind Tim Weston. I believe that was into turn one. Yep, side another by side into one. Yes, it was. Another thing to point out is actually... Oh, Solomon Cracknell have actually caught Shepard now. Yeah, they had two seconds before, and now that's a three-car battle behind the 43. So, possibly if these three could actually win, work together, we may actually see them catch the front lot. Yep, these three need to work very, very hard together. Change positions at the right time down the straights. And they will catch those front guys because they are battling very, very hard. Catching around about a second quicker than Anderson and Dodman last time around. But uh, O'Sullivan and Cracknell, are, as I said, around about a second quicker as well. So... Need to keep an eye on these guys and see if they can catch up. At the moment, the gap between Shepard and Catchin is eight seconds. But they can gain one and a half seconds a lap, which is very doable if they work together and not fight. Especially the way the guys at the front are fighting down. Conrad straight they come. Uh, that could be right at the end of the race. As Anderson's looking to actually make a move on the gulp here, so they've actually caught it fairly quickly over the top of the mountain. Yeah, it didn't take long at all with uh, the pace that Anderson has definitely got. And Dodman, thinking about... thought Dodman was going to try and squeeze a gap that may not have been there. Dodman's just going to tuck in behind Anderson. He might swing back down the inside and follow through. And he will. He'll follow Grigolt through, and he's going to try and take second place... Away from Anderson coming into turn one. No, he tucks back in behind. Playing the smart game. That's not too bad of an idea. Not too far away from the finish either. So these guys will be starting to plan the oh, moves for the final. Big, oh, big moment, moment for Greg Gold. <laughs> That's a bit wide at the exit of turn one. He's done a great job to hold on to it, but that has definitely compromised his speed. Anderson now starts to close up. Up mountain straight. Just clicks it into fifth gear coming up over the rise in the mountain. It will move through and take the lead away from Ethan Grigal. Oh, it's going to try and hold it around oh. the outside. Dodman's taken second. Grigal from first back to third within 50 metres. Yeah, so it just goes to show how quick positions can change in this very close and very competitive series. Great racing so far. At the front, I have some big names racing in this series throughout. Um, SVG is going to race in round two at Summit Point, so uh, he and uh, Fonty have a bit of uh, rivalry going, so that'll be good to watch between those two boys. We know how it's quick Shane can be. Imagine him in amongst this battle. Oh, that's just going to be absolutely awesome, I reckon. On board with Ethan Grigook coming down the mountain. Awesome view. And big thanks to Cut Price Racing for their support of us here at Vance Online and their support of this series. Jump onto their website, have a look. They've got some great deals at the moment. Down the mountain we go. Grigook closing on Dodman, who is closing on Anderson. Sonny Catchin's just staying at that one second gap, ready to make a move if he can. Oh, Riggle's out of the throttle. Side by side go Dobman and Anderson. This is going to be messy. Oh, they all ended up going through single file. I don't believe it. I don't know how, but they did. Five to go when they crossed the line.
another thing to note is that O'Sullivan's actually got by Shepard now, so we'll be on a charge to try and catch these front four. Yep, these guys need to work together just behind. We've got Travis Schweck and Scotty Fountain. They'll need to try and catch up as well. And we could end up with two very intense battles in the top 10. But have a look at the guys at the front. Greg Galton, Dobman, side by side, up over the rise in Mountain Straight. Down the hill, coming into turn two. For Griffins, they go. Still side by side, they go. And Anderson isn't gaining anything while they're fighting. No, he isn't. It's That just goes to show how close it is and even. So, well, someone hit the wall through the cutting I heard there. But I heard a noise, but anyway. I didn't see anyone. Jeffords right on the tail of O'Sullivan too. So, that could potentially end in a move. Tim Weston, Cody Bird still fighting as well. They've got a Philip Morton in that battle too. But he is a lap down. But still continuing on to accumulate some points. And that's probably going to be one of the main things in the series, just consistently scoring points rather than, if you do bin it, just pulling out straight away. Yep, yep. Guys do have the option to repair their car completely once. One quick repair. Uh, which will help, especially with this being an entry level car as well so this car is a free content car so definitely will help in that aspect next week we had to a free track as well so we had nearly 100 entries this week two weeks time we could end up with 200 or so with it being all free content who knows what will happen Griggle, Dodman side by side down Conrad straight on the limiter Oh, that was a big moment for Dodman there. Dodman's looking like he wants to try and start making a move. And then every time he goes to, he looks up and sees how many laps there is to go. And thinks better of it. Across the line now, four to go. Last lap around, they're doing... 235s pretty much the whole way around with from this front pack. Dylan Shepard's just got a move done on Ryan O'Sullivan through the final corner and through comes Cracknell. Get a cut price racing replay of the pass from Dylan Shepard. They're not actually making up any ground to the guys ahead. Thing on the live timing as well. Shepard's just been repassed again. Yeah, he has actually, by the looks of it. By O'Sullivan. Crack yeah, O'Sullivan's gone by, and Cracknell's possibly going to look to make a move as well. The Fountain's just made a move as well, so we're getting moves happening all the way throughout the field. I think the guys in this pack with O'Sullivan, Shepard, and Cracknell have realised that they're not going to catch the guys ahead. So it's time to possibly start fighting amongst themselves, and there's move from Monty going through. We go back live to the front. Monty catching now. He's onto the tail. Yes, he is. And he will be the one to watch come that yep. final lap with three cows in front of him. It's a bit like watching Jaws. You know that the shark's there. It's just how long it's going to take before the shark actually attacks. Yep, definitely. It's all that about... That was a good analogy, I reckon. Done well. <laughs> yeah, what's it, actually? I can give up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very much in such an even class, more or less, about racecraft rather than being outright outright fast. So it's going to be very interesting come these last few lap, well, the last lap or so. Saying that, though, these are four guys that have very, very good racecraft as well. So uh, we've seen how well Anderson can do with a damaged car in previous races that we've broadcast. Not a name we're familiar to see in the V8 supercar, but we've seen him in a lot of other series that we've broadcast. This good goal oh. goes up the inside. They're oh, just Anderson. about three wide. Great bit of skill from these three. Rick Gulk now going to have to try and go around the outside. 
Donny Catch is now getting himself in amongst it. Here comes Aiden Dodman. Dodman. Got the draft on the inside with Anderson. And they're going to go two by two. This is the first time all race that we're seeing Sonny catching right in this battle pack. Change oh, the lead once again. On to them. Big goal. Anderson, a little bit of a touch. They get out of it, but they're going to be three wide. Dodman's got nowhere to go. He's going to have to try and send it into a position that may not be there. Bit of bump drafting going on and by so the looks of it. It's good Golden Dodman. Top four separated by two tenths of a second. Tony Catchin now past Josh Anderson. Oh, but Anderson they touched back in behind. Around the outside. Yeah. Two and a half laps left. What a battle we've got. Shepard and O'Sullivan side by side as well. Travis Schweck has got past Scotty Fountain as well. So battles all amongst the top 10 right now. Donnie's dropped back again. Yes, and I don't know why. As well. Doesn't make sense. But anyway, maybe he's not quite ready. These these guys are being a little bit too aggressive and he's thinking, no, I'll wait a little bit longer. Here comes Dodman thinking about it across the top of the mountain. That would be trying very ambitious. Feel, yeah, it would. Be, I reckon he's trying to fill Greg Galt's mirrors at the moment. I agree. He's wanting to apply some pressure. He knows how much Greg has been sliding coming down the mountain through the S's and through the dipper, but oh, almost a clip of the wall there from Greg Galt too. Down Conrad straight for the 14th time in this race. After this one, there's two more to go. Not long. Johnny Catch is still staying there. Anderson looking around the outside of Dodman here, but Dodman's going to help break him into the chase. Managed to hold on to that quite well. Have a look at the battle pack behind, though. Oh, a little bit of contact between O'Sullivan and Shepard. Crackle's just sitting back watching as well. He's just waiting for something to happen between these guys. Cody Bird side by side. Tim Weston down Conrad and into the chase. Here we go. Here goes Cody Bird into the top 10. Go back to the front. Two to go as they start to climb up Mountain Straight once more. What a race this has been. A little bit of traffic in front of them. Yep. This will make things a little bit interesting. Come past David Miller. Out of the way quite easily for them. Actually got a little bit of a gap before they reach the next car on their climb around the mountain. So they may not encounter any other traffic before the end of the race. Let's have a look at this right behind in that next battle pack. I don't think I'm on instant replay, but it sure looks like one. Shepard, Cracklow, Sullivan, all jostling for position coming out of Griffin's Bend and up into the cutting. Yeah, they're definitely going at it, and Sullivan's moved back into the front of that little pack. Have a look at the battle pack from 14th as well. Gary Cousins, Shane Witt, Robert Northway, James McKee. These four guys have been separated by nothing pretty much all race. Northway and McKee we saw in a battle earlier. And Witt, Cousins, have come through the field and caught up. Apologies for the guys back in the field, but the, the battle at the front's just been too... Intense not to watch. Northway and Cousins almost coming together through the cutting, side by side. But we'll go back to the front as they come back down Conrod for the second last time. Riggot leading from Dodman and Anderson. Sonny Catchin just sitting there watching, waiting, trying to work out the best time well, to make Dodman, his move. Here we go. But I reckon this is gonna he's gonna do a fake move here. He's gonna try he's gonna show good goal. He's willing to make a move, but he's gonna break early, I reckon. Yep, there we go. He's going to let him by. Just as I put the Or is he? 
Or is he? He can actually get this move done. He might be far enough up. No, he's not quite far enough up to get the nose chopped off. As they come up to the start finish line for the final or second to last time. Start what will be the final lap of this awesome race. Here we go. On now kitchens and and that. Four oh, wide! Just about four, four wide, wide at the, the start line. line. Here we go. Catch is gonna go from fourth. Ducks back into quite. line. Oh, oh, well oh in the corner does not work for the bomb. Survive. How do they get through there? Up the mountain they go. Wow. Oh, strap yourselves in for two minutes of absolute intense mayhem. Oh. Anderson's stuck on the outside. Catchin's going to get through here. Anderson will have to give up position. Or will he? Oh, oh a little bit of contact. Catchin actually, actually had to go up onto the curb to avoid contact. Shepard... And Cracknell side by side back behind. Cracknell tried to go around the outside, but Dodman right on the Taylor Grid Gould. What a race this has been, and what a series this is shaping up to be. Grid Gould from Dodman, from Anderson, nothing between them. Two tenths at the moment. Anderson onto the grass to try and potentially make a move. This is what I was talking about with last week. Oh, and oh, Dobman's going to try oh, over the top no of the mountain. Oh. Last week That's we saw beautiful. seven cars separated by this little of a gap at Watkins Glen in the practice race. This week, Mount Panorama has turned it on. Dodman needs to get a little bit closer to Griggle. Try and make a move into the chase, but Griggle's missed the gear. Oh, here we go. And Kenshin's jumped right back in. Anderson's right on the tail. He's going to try around the outside. Oh, Griggle couldn't get it changed in the fifth. And have a look how oh, quickly they're go. catching. Dobman's oh, going to get through. Get Anderson's going to bump draft. He's going to bump draft him. Big oh, push. Kenshin's going to bump draft. Oh, Dobman. They're going to go three, two by two. Oh, oh. scrapping. They're trying to find oh. gaps. Oh, Griggle's been shoved off the road. Big time. He's going to hold it. Anderson, oh, Dodman, almost contact, Dodman's oh, around! Contact and Sonny Catchin's going to take the race lead. He's going to hold it off into the final corner, I reckon. What a race this has been. Sonny Catchin just sat back, waited for the time to pounce. It and was taken. Forrest Elbow, and he crosses the line to take the win. What a race. Josh Anderson finishes second. Believe. Ethan Grigg, Colton third. Oh, Michael Green was going past on Shepard as well. Oh, what a last lap. We'll have to get a cut price racing replay of that into the chase. Because that was intense. Congratulations to Sonny Catchin for just being there, ready to pounce at the right moment, as we suspected. Josh Anderson just giving Grid got a little bit of a bump draft and then there was big wheel to wheel contact between Dodman and Grid Gult. And then contact between Dodman and Anderson put Dodman into the fence. Manages to hold on for fourth. Wowee, what a race. Indeed, I can't believe that all happened in the space of one lap. What an amazing race we had. This is a replay of actually contact between O'Sullivan and Shepard in the chase. Wow. You could hear the big brake lockups in action behind. Shepard with a big late dive, missed the apex. Just a little bit of a touch with O'Sullivan, and then Cracknell manages to get through. Dodman just holds on the fourth position. Wow, what a race! I'm lost for words as well. I can't even put it into words how good that race was. Someone said scripted. This is what we will expect for the entire season because these cars are so evenly matched. 
We will see action like this in every single race, but we'll run through the official race results. One tenth of a second separates first and second. Sonny Catchin over Josh Anderson. Then Ethan Grigg Galt, Hayden Dodman, Ryan O'Sullivan in fifth position. Michael Cracknell, Dylan Shepherd, Travis Schwecky, Scott Fountain, and Tim Weston round out the top ten. Oh. Over the page, Cody Bird, Bo Albert, Christopher Norton, Gary Dawkins, James McKee, Robert Northway, Gary Cousins, Scott Larnack, Philip Stoneman, and Ashley, Paul Jones, Ross Daniels, Kevin Henderson, Shane Witt, Reese Gardner, Philip Morton, Michael Trooper, David Miller, Sandra Delilah, Corey Preston, Thomas McMillan, Ethan Warren, Jason Bentz, Warren Pickering, Michael Hammond, Zach Best, Brian Borg, Riley Blythe, and Ben Snell. Wow, we what a field. Yes, it was, and it was an absolutely awesome race with fighting going on all over the field. Oh. We'll, uh, we'll wrap it up there for the night, but what an absolutely amazing race that was. Our next broadcast will be Sunday, Mega Day, 9.45 a.m. Sunday morning for round zero of Oceanic Endurance Championship. Sunday evening, we'll have Carrera Cup Australia. Monday, we'll restart. Aussie Driver Search, iRacing, V8 Supercar Series. Next Wednesday, of course, Oceanic Sprint Series. And next Thursday, we will have a special third event, which is... Flip my tongue. Grand Slam. Yeah, the 410 Grand Slam. I, I knew it was the 410 something. I couldn't remember what the end of it was. Too much going on. But a uh, big thank you to everyone for tuning in. Big congratulations to the, the four guys at the front for absolutely keeping that action back. Funny catch and... Josh Anderson, Ethan Griggle, and Hayden Dobman. Fantastic job. Wow we. Two weeks' time we'll be back for this series. Cam, thanks for helping me out tonight. That was absolutely Yeah, no worries. I thoroughly enjoyed it and yeah, it's gonna be an absolute awesome series and I'm looking forward to the rest of it. Big thank you for tuning in. We will be back, as I said, on Sunday morning. We'll see you next time here at Vouts Online. Bye for now.